<laughs> the forces that be thought you didn't have enough practice changing tires, I guess. <laughs> yeah, need to test out changing a tire on the truck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we were just hitching up, getting ready to leave, and Jason was checking the tires, and this one looked pretty low to us. So then we noticed, where'd it go? I think we'll oh, you moved the truck. Oh. Is it over there? No? Anyway, there's a nail. There's quite a big nail. Oh, here it is. Yeah, it's like a bolt. Yeah. So, now you get practice changing this tire. Excellent. Excellent, fun stuff. Just what I wanted. Yes. <laughs> and it's starting to rain. Yup. <laughs> How you doing? Good. I'm glad when we replaced our tires a couple months ago, I replaced all seven, including the spare. Yeah. So it was getting pretty old. Yeah, that is good. So our spare is actually a brand new tire. Yep. Yep. Jeez, that's a big boy. You're gonna take it out? Just a little bit. Let's see. Ooh. Oh yes. I can hear it. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah, that does suck. <laughs> Boom. So we had a decent issue. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those days where it's like stuff happens uh. and it really sucks. So I don't know, we gotta figure out what to do here about this, but Ray, as we we're backing into our spot here, noticed little cord hanging down which I identified as our brake line almost immediately on our trailer and it looks like it's scraped off so I'm gonna have to find a new part for that I don't know where I'm gonna do that I have to reach out to more ride uh, to get a Dexter contact to figure out right where to pick that up yeah so, cause the disc brakes are through Dexter yeah and it looks like whatever piece it was holding on to the caliper down here is missing. So whatever happened, that broke off. And yeah. And then, then it was just dragging. Um, this caliper seems a little loose. And we found this bolt <laughs> on our back snap pad, or our back jack. So the snap pad caught it. Which isn't the first time it's caught like weird random bolts and stuff, <laughs> I, I feel like. So go snap pad. <laughs> Catching um, our parts flying off the rig. <laughs> and so we were trying to figure out where this came from. And I was thinking maybe this like caught the brake line. But I just found our caliper back here. Yeah, it's if not you can a good hear noise. that, it's uh, completely free floating. So both of these bolts. What's wild is like, I can't think of any point in our drive of hitting something. I mean, we went over some pretty bad potholes because we just came through Louisiana and we're north of Houston right now. So, I mean, we're in like, we were on a really bad part of the 10, but I don't, do you remember? Like, I can't even think of like one specific, like really bad 
instance or hitting something or hearing any type of noise and being like, what was that? You know, so it's not even like we were tipped off to anything being wrong. No. And I mean, it's not like I felt anything different in the, the braking yeah. of the, the truck and trailer because both of these, the whole right side, the braking systems gone. So the left side of the trailer has been braking it this whole time. Right. Which since is... whenever this stuff happened. But like, that's not something on my list to check the, the caliper bolts. Well, so it like, might be now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's like a definitely. Um, so I don't even know where to start because this caliper looks like it, it snapped. So I'll have to talk to them about that as well. Yeah. <sighs> this is definitely the realistic side of RV life. <laughs> yeah, sometimes shit happens. <laughs> yes. Just like regular life. The only problem is we're supposed to be getting to San Diego. Yeah, we're so. supposed to be starting our huge long haul back to LA so, or San Diego. So I guess that's the only the only uh, thing that adds that stress, especially to our lives, because we're not mechanically inclined. Yeah. And quite frankly, it's like, I don't even know where to start with this. So I guess we'll have to reach out to we'll Moride to get a yeah. Dexter contact. But it's still like, I don't know. I'll have to send pictures because I don't know what these pieces are called. Or like, yeah. did I miss a piece of maintenance where I'm supposed to retighten the caliper bolts? Maybe. All right. Well, we still haven't finished checking in or doing anything. We just wanted to give you an update and uh, find where this bolt went to. So we're going to finish checking in. I think we got some rain on the forecast, so we're not going to do that and just kind of see what our next steps are. Uh, I think I just found the... Oh, yeah, the brake fluid? Yeah, the brake yeah, fluid. I told you it's just been spraying out. Oh, my goodness. Let's go wash okay. your hands because it's not good stuff. Okay. This are available to take your call. If you'd like to leave a message, please remain on the line. Good afternoon, warranty department. Hi. Oh, goodness. A real person. <laughs> um, Hi. <laughs> All right, guys. I wanted to give you a little update as to where we are at. So after checking in yesterday, uh, we looked up our more ride paperwork and we found some stuff uh, related to Dexter who makes the Kodiak disc brakes. And so their offices were closed. Um, so this morning I was a little irritated, but <laughs> right now it's later in the day, we're doing much better. So I called uh, Dexter repeatedly today and I just kept getting sent to voicemail. And so I would call back and then try a different number to a different department to try and literally just get any human on the phone because again, I feel better now, but I woke up today with a, a lot of anxiety around this is a really big repair. It feels like really huge to me. And we're in Houston and we need to make it to San Diego to go to Mexico in um, less than two weeks now. So we were gonna take the two weeks instead of doing insane driving days like we normally do and you've seen us do in the past. We wanted to take the two weeks to kind of stop at every place for a couple of nights. However, I'm not sure what's gonna happen now. So anyway, after spending literally the whole morning just trying to get in touch with someone at Dexter, um, I was roaming about their website and I found a Kodiak website that they linked to. And so it makes sense because Kodiak is a brand of Dexter, but we figured we had to go through the parent company. Anyway, so I went on Kodiak's website and I found a warranty phone number, which is actually the phone call you heard because I uh, I thought it was going to be the same type of thing because anyway, I just wasn't having any luck. So of course, the one time I turn on the camera to record a phone call going to voicemail, I get a human, which is why I had that funny reaction of like, oh, a human. <laughs> 
But anyway, Kodiak is a much smaller subset I've learned. So their warranty department, I didn't ask, but I get the feeling that it, it literally is like two people maybe because when I they transferred me even though they answered warranty he was like oh you're gonna want to talk to Jesse he's like the main warranty person so um I got in touch with a guy named Jesse so I explained the situation I explained that this is in our case essentially an emergency we're not stranded on the side of the road obviously we made it to a campground but we need to go to Mexico and like this needs to be fixed so we can make it from Houston to San Diego so he was very understanding and asked me to send him pictures and it could get the gist of what I was saying it's, it's really hard when you don't know all of the name of the parts and like it's like speaking a foreign language to someone but you could tell that he was getting what I was saying so he obviously just wanted pictures. So I sent him pictures of the mess down there and he replied and he said, these are great pictures, <laughs> which I thought was funny because they don't look like great pictures to me. It's, it's, it's a scary situation under there. But he said, it looks like the bolt came out of the caliper and put the yoke under stress. The rotor looks good. I think all you need is the yoke, caliper, and brake line. I'll get those out to you today. I replied to this email and asked if he could do um, one day shipping, but he'd already like put it on the table and uh, did two day shipping, which is fine. Um, so I'm excited. We're in a good position now. We're getting the warranty parts. And so my next step was to find a mobile um, repair person. So I went through, we're at Thousand Trails Lake Conroe right now. And to be perfectly honest, this actually worked out really well because when we left Louisiana today, we were going to stay here just one night. It's north uh, of Houston and we'd been here before and we knew we liked the park and we just wanted just, I mean, it's free for us. So we don't have, we'd rather stay in a thousand trails for one night while we're traveling instead of a Walmart parking lot if we don't have to. So um, this area has a ton of stores and a ton of mailing facilities. So thankfully this campground accepts packages for us. It's one of the few thousand trails though that requires money so we do have to pay five bucks to get our package which is totally fine. So anyway I was looking through the thousand trails booklet and I called all of the mobile repair people that were in there and oh, a lot of them said they don't work with hydraulic brakes but I have two prospects. So one guy said he's very confident he definitely thinks he can do this and change it out no problem but he needed to call his main facility um, he was just like the mechanic, but he works for a company. So he is on their schedule. So he's calling his main facility to see if he can get to us over the weekend because the parts look like they're going to get here on a Friday. So <laughs> I need a mobile mechanic for Saturday or Sunday. I mean, we don't really want to keep pushing it out, but we might have to. And then the other guy said that he also needed to check with his boss. So I'm just waiting to hear back on pricing from one and the schedule on the other. And yeah, we'll see. So I was surprised that I had to call so many. Like, so my morning this morning was just trying to get someone at Dexter, which was a huge fail, but thankfully I got Jesse at Kodiak. And then my afternoon was spent trying to find a mobile mechanic. So, but I have two prospects, so I'm happy we're in a good place. And thankfully, we were able to extend our reservation here at Lake Conroe for an extra week and a half. We have zero intention of staying that long because we need to be in San Diego. Have I said that enough? <laughs> but we were really thankful that Thousand Trails would, would do that for us because I had only booked one night in their system. And when I went on this morning, it, I tried to book just for an extra week just to, to have a cushion. And it was saying that the dates weren't available. So Jason actually this morning walked up to the front office, talked to them, explained our situation, explained that we literally didn't have brakes on one side of our trailer and we couldn't move. So they were very understanding and went into the system and extended our reservation a week and a half just to give us the extra room. So thank you, Thousand Trails for that, really appreciated. Takes off one stressor for sure. Now having the parts already on their way takes off a huge other stressor and third is just waiting for that mechanic and you're probably wondering where Jason is right now 
and he is actually at Discount Tire. He made an appointment this morning for the afternoon to take in the truck tire that you saw had a nail in it. So we're getting that fixed. And then we also, he decided to take in the trailer tire because from, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, so maybe a couple videos ago for you, we had to change, we put on the spare and then because we had a leaky valve on our main tire. So we took that to discount tire, they fixed the valve. Like you could literally touch the valve and it would just spray air. So they fixed that, everything was good. And then we had to change it to the spare again because our tire reminder was letting us know that it was leaking. But when you went out there and you touched the valve, the valve's totally fine. So it's another issue. We could not find a nail in it. We couldn't find anything wrong with it. So. We don't know exactly what's happening. So he has the truck tire with him and the trailer tire. I feel like we're falling apart, but um, hopefully he gets those two issues fixed today as well. So we're moving forward. You just gotta trudge through these stressful times and things are all falling into place. So I'll make sure to check in with you in a couple days to let you know where we stand with everything. <laughs> okay, so. It's been a couple days and we have a handful of updates uh, as to where we're at. So why don't you start with uh, the tires? All right, so tires. So uh, <laughs> we found a little crack in the trailer rim, which was really interesting. Um, so it wasn't like always deflating so that's why we, I guess we've probably had issues with it for a while mm -hmm. in addition to the valve stem and so they were able to put it underwater and we saw tiny little air bubbles coming out. So we contacted Grand Design to help us get in contact with Lionhead who manufactures the rim and so they sent us out a brand new rim and it had a new tire around it. <laughs> uh, but that's good for us. I didn't want to put the new tire on with three other old ones. And then the tire we had was fine. Mm -hmm. So I bought another rim from Discount Tire and I put the new tire on that and it's another spare. And then I had them take the old tire off the broken rim and put it on the new like uh, normal rim. So the new rim that we got. Yes. Yeah. So I have the old tire on the new rim that we got. And then I bought a new spare rim and I put the new tire on the spare rim. So yes. now we have two spares for the trailer. Yes. And we still have the same four tires we've always had. Yes. And we'll <laughs> replace them all together. Probably someday sooner than later. Probably sooner. Yeah. Let's not worry about that right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's the tire update. We are in a fantastic position there. We're done. So now as far as um, the mobile mechanic goes. So I told you a couple days ago I was waiting to hear back and I never heard back from either one, which was extremely disappointing. And so I called both of them, their main number and I'm getting voicemail. Before I realized I probably wasn't getting through to either one of those mobile texts, we ended up calling Jesse from Kodiak back because I forgot to ask him the first time I was on the phone if our warranty with them covers them paying for a mobile me mechanic. And so like uh, everything else RV related, he said, it depends. Uh, on the situation and they have paid mobile tech claims before and he kind of felt like in our situation because we physically like we can't move the trailer you know we have no brakes so anyway that all doesn't matter because he eventually said you know I really feel like you guys could do this yourself and like he was he did a decent pep talk right yeah. Yeah. You know, him and Jason talked a little bit more of like, okay, why do you think we can do this? This feels really specialized to us and like really complicated. And when it comes to brakes, that's just downright scary. So he talked Jason through 
He's like, it's so easy to just take everything you need to take off. I can't even regurgitate it properly because I don't know all the terms still. So anyway, he explained how to take everything off and replace what, the broken yoke and how to put everything back on. And so he's like, literally, it is four bolts on the yoke, two bolts on the caliper. He's like, I know you guys can do it. He's like, I don't think you need a tech. So this was yesterday and we kind of said, all right, well, we'll still, we'll, uh, we'll probably submit a claim for a tech just to give you a heads up. And he's like, all right, whatever. But turns out it is now the end of day Friday and I have not been able to get in touch with either one of those techs, like I said. So what are we doing tomorrow? <laughs> We're going to try to replace it ourselves. Yes. So that's where we're at. I think we can do it. We watched a couple YouTube videos after we uh, decided that that was the avenue we were going to take. Um, and then we'll probably watch a couple more tomorrow. It does look surprisingly simple enough, but knock on wood. Where's the wood? There it is. <laughs> it is that simple. So. We will see, and we will check in with you tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so this is how far we've gotten. What is going on? All right. <laughs> so we watched a couple of YouTube videos and figured out how to take the rotor off so we can get access to the yoke back here. And it looks like actually both, um, caliper bolt yes things broke off. broke so yeah. i have a theory yeah i haven't told you okay yet. so this is my theory sure you're hearing it here <laughs> first so because there's two bolts from the caliper to the yoke i think one bolt well this is my theory but also possibly based off information from what the rep from kodiak was saying that it's super rare for the bolts to come loose, but if they do, it compromises the yoke. Mm -hmm. So I think one bolt came loose, Kay. worked its way out, lost, gone, because we don't know where that bolt is. Then who knows how long we've been driving like that. Yep. The I-10, miserable freeway, we know this. Yep. I think that is then what put all the stress on the yoke, causing it to break, and I think the second bolt, whether it was in there all the way or starting to come loose as well, I think that bolt, like, you know, went in the wheel well and launched forward, okay. <laughs> ripped out the hydraulic line of the front. Okay. Because how else would that happen? We have no idea how that no. hydraulic line got loose. Yep. After it hits that and rips that off, you know, tink, 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 goes and lands on our back jack. Yeah, on the snap pad. It's it. out there grabbing grabbing bolts. Yeah. So that's my theory. Okay. <laughs> this yeah. Sound plausible. <laughs> no, it definitely does. I would uh disagree on the first part where the bolt came out just because so I think uh -huh. we had one of these break. We oh. obviously must have hit a pothole that added stress because we cracked our rim at some point also. Okay. Uh on the ten. Yeah. And I point. think instead of the bolt coming out originally, I think it broke out. And then that put undue stress on the other one. Took a while, mm -hmm. but then that side broke as well. So, anyway. And then shot out and broke that. Oh yeah, that part okay, is all, sure. yeah. <laughs> That's all I care about. Yeah. Um, okay, <clears throat> anyway, so those are just theories. We truly have no idea, but I do. Yeah. That's what I think, so. What is happening? Where are we at? Yeah, so um, we had to figure out how to get our dust cap off, uh, which was very painful because most of the videos showed that you pry them off. Mm -hmm. uh, ours does not pry off, which we might have cracked it just a little bit uh, trying to pry it off. Yes. <clears throat> um, not breaking, cracking, just like it's plastic. So there's a crack through the plastic. So we'll be buying a new one, but it will be able to be used again. Um, they're like $12. Yeah. But to get it off, you need a two and three sixteenths socket or wrench. And I don't know if you know how large that is, 
but it's pretty large and for a wrench to be able to open that wide, it has to be uh, a pretty big wrench. So luckily uh, we're in Texas and there was a tractor supply right down the road that happened to carry really uh, inappropriately <laughs> large wrenches. Everything's bigger in Texas. Yeah, so thank God we're in Texas for, for this repair. It's just really... Uh, I hope this translates. No, it's the size... How <laughs> funny this is, though. Yeah. Like, I... to, to remove a little plastic <laughs> hub, too, it's... That's, you know, yeah. like it... Yeah. It's silly. It is. It's downright silly. Yeah. And I have to admit, <clears throat> this thing totally changed my day. Because I have been so grumpy. I've been so frustrated dealing with all of this that when Jason came back from Tractor Supply just now and he was like, I got the wrench, let's go see if it works. And I turned the corner and I saw that thing, I died. I had a really good laugh. Yeah. And it's like one of those laughs that puts you in a better mood, you know, yeah. when you just really need it. And then everything else <clears throat> um, came out. So we, we were able yes. to get our bearing out, the retainer <laughs> clip, everything else came out very easy, which has made us happy. And so we were able to get the rotor off. Woohoo! So now we are going to remove the yo old yoke and put on, put on the new one. So let's hope everything continues. Yes, and we'll show you putting everything back. We kind of just wanted to take it all out and really focus and make sure that we knew what we were doing so we could yeah. put it all back properly. It feel a lot more comfortable now. Yes. <laughs> all right. All right. Done. That's because my my manly uh, <laughs> facial hair that I got growing. <laughs> totally. <laughs> so, yeah, um, the installation is done. Now we need to fix the other brake line that got ripped out of the front caliper. However, nothing else looks amiss up there. No broken parts. No missing bolts. The caliper's still on there. No broken yoke or mm. looks even stressed yoke. So. Uh, we're going to install this next, and then we're going to have to bleed our lines, which has uh, raised the most nerve-wracking part. And all of this stuff is not... No, actually, getting that off was the most nerve-wracking yeah. part. Uh, I'm fine bleeding the lines. <laughs> all of this stuff is not hard to do. It's just, just a little specialized, and you have to take your time. Uh, yes, the most stressful part was getting off that plastic hub. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. Once again, we're not handy, so if we can do this, most likely you can. Yeah. Probably faster and better. And the one thing we didn't show, because I forgot to grab the camera to record it, was when we put the bearings back. Mm -hmm. Was we repacked our own yeah. bearings, which yes. we had purchased this universal cone bearing packer. Yeah, worked um, out pretty well. Yeah, and we've been super nervous to repack bearings. The last time we were uh, supposed to repack the bearings, we just got brand new suspension, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> delayed yeah. that down the road. Uh, but we're going to have to within the next couple of months because 
our Moor Ride suspension is going to be coming up on its one year yes. uh, due date and we're going to have to do all that. So anyway, uh, right. let's install this line and get moving. I just noticed you had a little bit of grease on your face. <laughs> That was successful, and we didn't even end up with any extra parts. I know. I'm very proud of us. And when you move slow, we, have, we moved very slow, and you pay attention, we can get through it. So I'm pretty proud of us, to be honest. I feel like we actually understand our brake system a lot better now as well. Yeah, absolutely. And then, um, of course, we watched a couple of different videos on repacking bearings because we'd never done it before. And uh, after we finished, <laughs> we did find a great video detailing how to repack bearings on an independent suspension video by the Honor Network. <laughs> so uh, so if you have IS and need to repack your bearings, uh, we'll link that uh, to go check out. Um, and yes. we'll have to redo all of ours again at mm -hmm. some point in the future, but for now, we have to get back on the road because we have a deadline. Yes. So we finished everything yesterday. We're taking today to kind of regroup and replan our route and figure out where we want to stay because unfortunately um, we were here today's Sunday so and we got off the road on Monday so we lost a week. But we're okay with that because we're just going to hightail it to San Diego take a couple days to kind of relax there before our Mexico trip, but we will... Relax. Well, yeah, and by relax, I mean work, <laughs> edit videos, <laughs> write blog posts, um, just catch up yeah. on, on a bunch of stuff because we will have limited cell service in Mexico, so we don't want to fall too far behind. So anyway, you guys have seen us drive cross country. We have two videos showing it. So we're not gonna bore you with that because the next time we're gonna see you is going to be in Mexico. I feel like you're not Ooh. as excited as I was just, okay, there we go. All right, don't forget to like this video and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Bye, Bye guys. guys.